right, so day two in the books, uh, you know, another day like yesterday. No contact, no pads, but uh, the guys are, uh, as I said yesterday, I just, I just actually uh, tried to run down the film quickly before I came in here, and then I met with the office of staff just briefly. And, you know, it's, I still feel like um, these guys have pretty good retention. I mean, in, in the midst of the install we're in, there's not a tremendous amount of mistakes, which is good. Now, we got a lot of work to do. I don't act like, oh, geez, we're all, everything's great. But I'm just saying it's, it's amazing, really, in year one of a program, you know, usually there's a little more lag time in the beginning of preseason camp because you're trying to pick up where you left off in the spring, and it's not really ingrained. But to the kids' credit, they're really working hard, and they've done a great job with retention. So that's, that's been good. Um, but, of course, tomorrow we put shoulder pads on. I believe it's tomorrow. Um, I got a, that whole five-day acclimatization thing, but and then uh, and then we go you know a couple days of that. So it's just a, it's a gradual into the pads and then into contact. So tomorrow you know the physicality starts picking up when the pads go on. Was I right on that, Carly? I'm right on that. I gotta go look it up. I got it on my schedule. So anyways, I uh, the physicality of that picks up, and when the physicality picks up, it also uh, you know brings out usually more footwork mistakes and problems, right? Because you had contact in there it's another component so but uh, so far so good and uh, you know uh, you know I like the attitude of the team and I like where we're headed questions you guys have from what you've seen so far how's the overall conditioning facility excellent yeah excellent I mean I think Frank Prino did an excellent job getting this team ready to go um, but you know it's day two you know and uh, but I mean what you worry about is just the uh, you know the, as they start getting tired and they start breaking down in terms of the injury rates, you know, and you're looking this time of year, hamstring pulls and things like that, you know, so, but so far so good. You know, we ha we've had our share of pulls, but not now. How is this day two different for you than any of the other ones you've seen? I mean, it just stops longer, especially with Frank. Well, I just think the retention, as I said earlier, has been great. You know, it's, it's a tribute to the guys here. I think we've got some, uh, some uh, you know, really intelligent guys on this football team that, that – uh, really uh, have done a great job with that. I mean, you know, Chase uh, Reddick is uh, amazing. As I said to people before, they said, what's it like to have that many coordinators? You know, that's the good and the bad news. You know, kind of the good news, though, is you learn how to assimilate information pretty quickly, and he's a really bright guy, and there's no issue there. I mean, that's not been an issue really yet. I mean, so that's, that's great, you know, and the, these kids have, have worked real hard and uh, obviously studied hard, and they've done a great job. So I'm really pleased with that piece of it now. It's day two. You know, installation keeps growing every single day. So, like, how are they going to – my question to them after practice was, you know, how, you know, how are you going to you gonna handle in day four and five installation? And then fatigue is setting, and then you're in the physical contact, and your body's beat up. And then, you know, what happens is the old saying, fatigue makes cowards of us all. I mean, you know, you get, when, when you get tired, things start falling apart on you, and that's part of toughness. You know, you talk about physical toughness and mental toughness, and you have to learn how to fight through that. That's the – that's what camp is. That's what training camp is. It's the ability to learn how to fight through mentally and physically, you know, the the uh, the fatigue factor in camp, and still get better every day. You know, and and you know, usually mature guys, older guys, do better with that. So we're not hit that yet. I, you could ask me that question three days from now, and I'll give you the honest answer. You know, I'm, I might say, hey, it's great, or I might say, I'm, I'm not happy. You know, I mean, but right now, I think they're right on schedule from that standpoint. But we're talking about touch football right now, you know, so put that where it belongs. Coach, you referenced Chase. I mean, uh, you talked a, a lot about I think a lot of us, you know, been concerned with how he looks, you know, on the field and developing in that way. But yeah. I think you've expressed your desire for him to be a leader. Yeah. And, and how has that message from you yeah. been received? And great. As he's, been developing? he's been great. I mean, he's uh, done a great job with it. You know, he's, he's really one of the guys, you know, but yet he'll challenge them. And uh, he's held himself accountable. And I really believe that. It's not about Chase. I really believe in a, it's sincere with this guy that it's about the team. I feel like our seniors really want to want to want to win for Boston College and want our team to have success. As opposed to sometimes what can come out is you know I, I gotta it's got to be great for me. It's my senior year. I'm not saying everyone's got a little of that in them, but but I I, I see it as a guy who's done a great job wanting to have success for his team. So I'm really happy with that, and I and I like it. Now you know. Like I, I, like I say to you, I say to them, you know, you know, it's easy to be a great leader when the sun's shining and, you know, it's, it's 70 degrees and everything's going pretty good. Sometimes it's not as easy when you're beat up and you're tired and it's 97 degrees and you've had about enough and you're in day 13 and 
We're going to find out then how good our leadership is. Well, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be good. I don't have the answer to that right now. But it all it appears to me that it's been good, and I like the attitude, and I like the mindset. I think the intentions are all great, and I don't think that it's going to change. It's just everything's a learning process. You know, you learn how to handle that. It's my job, our job, to put them in those stressful situations, to create stress, to learn how to handle stress, stress from fatigue, stress from hard coaching. You know, we really get on their case pretty hard. Why? Because, you know, it's, it's really intense when it's games on the line and it's fourth and one, uh, you know, on the road. I mean, it's not a pleasant thing. So you have to learn to train for that. You know, I could make it zippity doo dah every day, but that wouldn't really help them get ready. That's not my job, you know. So we try to create those, those situations, and we'll continue to do that. I'll, when I see the right opportunities here as we head down into this thing, I'll, 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 I'll turn it on pretty good when I, when I, when I can to, to, to start to really see if I can, we can maintain our composure, our toughness. It's all part of training camp. Steve, coming out of spring, you, you have mentioned that the evaluation of personnel is yep. getting evidence and being a, being a balanced team is going to be important. Right. So what effect has the offensive line, you know, their cohesion kind of helped that along, and how vital will that be to the establishment of this balance that we've seen? Well, huge. And I, and I think the O-line, I'm really pleased with the way the O-line's coming coming together. We, hopefully we'll keep them all healthy, and, you know, sometimes you get dinged up in camp and you start breaking it down. But I'd like to maintain the – five, six, seven guys in there and, and, and watch them grow. But they've, they've done a good job with it. I, I, I was teasing Ryan Day today. I told him, I said, this is a really tough day for me today. We, you know, day two of practice, and we, we threw the ball with the ones 29 times and ran it 20. I said, I don't think that's ever happened to me in my life. So, but we've got good balance. I just want to make sure we always be 30 run 29 pass. You know, just get up one more one. But, so, but it, it's great. We balanced it up pretty good today, and, and uh, I think, you know, the line's developing really well. I'm real pleased with that. And, uh, you, know, um, you know, just on a sidebar, you didn't ask me the question, but I, I, so far, you know, I like the young backs. You know, it's a big concern for us is the depth at running back. And I like the young backs so far. So that's, that's, been, that's been a pleasant uh, deal. Yeah, I think Matt's done a great job with that. He kind of, you know, he came in here just kind of, you know, he's got, a, he does have a lot of experience. He's been through a lot, you know, as a, in, in, you know, uh, both team wise and personally. But he's he's got a lot of ability. But uh, um, he's just done a great job of kind of like just being one of the guys and kind of, you know, keeping his mouth shut and kind of working hard. And you know, I think you know, not trying to come in here and just working, just working. And uh, you know, um, it hasn't been an easy path for him. And uh, but I think he's really enjoying it here. You know, listen, we got great guys here. I mean, these are great guys here at Boston College now. This is a very welcoming locker room. You know, it's a, it's a welcoming university. You know, it's just what it is. And, and it's what makes it great. And, you know, you get guys like Matt come in here and they, they, they notice it right away. You know, it's like, wow. It's like my son notices that. You know, they come in here like, wow, this is a, this is a great group of guys. You know, and, and, and that's a good thing, you know. We got to go win some football games, but we got a bunch of good guys. So is your job more in coaching now than it is worrying about any culture change in that locker room? It sounds like you don't have to worry too much about that for establishing your own culture. I think the culture of good people, as I said, welcoming, that's good. I think the team concept um, of not being fragmented. That's come a long way, but that you know, and that's still a work in progress. Do you know what I mean? You know, you know, what you don't want is a bunch of little clicks. You know, so the seniors done a great job trying to embrace this whole. You know, starts within your unit, like you know, the tight ends going out and, and getting a bite to eat together, the offensive line going. That that kind of stuff started happening, which is really encouraging. It's really great. You know, I mean, it's not hard to lead great people in that direction. You know what I mean? Because that's really fundamentally what they want. They just seem to have fragmented and clicked out a little bit. Now they're coming back in together. So that, that, that piece of it. And then I think there's another piece. You know, uh, uh, Steve Diossi came in here and spoke to our team last night and did an unbelievable job. You know, and he talked about three things. It's amazing. I, I had no commentary to him coming into this. And he's Steve, you say whatever you want to say. But he talked about toughness. You know, you gotta, BC's got to be a tough football team. Talked about being a team team, accountable to each other really important, and having an edge of, 
you know, being able to, you know, be on top of your assignments and, and, and using your mind. Those are three things, and, and we talk about those three things. But it was really cool to listen to him talk, whether it was when he played, uh, he just keeps coming back to those three things. So to answer your question in more detail, um, you know, everything's shaping, you know, but that I still feel like we haven't been put in enough stressful situations in training camp to really test that mental, mental physical toughness yet. Those other pieces are, are getting better, are, are really coming along, and we have great kids, and... But you know, you know, we also got to make sure we're, we're we're tough, and you know, and, and, and Steve talked about that last night. You know, I mean, I don't know, I, I'm trying, I'm searching for the right way to say this, you know, but you know, it's great to be a good guy, but you got to have that real competitive side too. You know, like what's beautiful is when you have a great person who's a vicious competitor, right? That's what you're always striving for, you know, and that's what I want us to be group of great people, you know, great people. But when it's time to compete, within the rules, you compete as hard as you can compete. And, and finding that balance is critical. And that we're working on that, right? I mean, it's, it's hard to assimilate that. Right. I mean, good. You know, that's that's the, you know the good news here is, listen. While we did not have two seasons that anybody wanted to have, we've all been there. <laughs> but it was only a couple years ago that we came off a twelve-year bowl run, twelve consecutive years of bowl games, eight consecutive winning bowl games in those twelve years. It wasn't ten years ago. It wasn't seven years ago. It was two years ago. Okay, so you know that helps because these guys do have experience with haven't had that success and gone to a bowl game. And so they, they know what that tastes like a little bit. And that's a good thing, you know, that helps. You know, and uh, so, you know, when you're trying to make sure you're, you're trying to get it back to, you know, the whole culture understanding that not winning is not acceptable, you know, and, and, and you know, it's human nature, it's human nature. Over time, things set in. So we gotta, we got to re, redirect that. Everybody I would have a different philosophy. They'd answer that differently. But, you know, number one, beyond the doubt, if you can't play defense, you're not going to win. Okay? That's my opinion. That's our opinion. Okay? Now, how do you want to play defense? And, you know, we want to play defense. We want to have a um, – uh, we want a staff that's an aggressive get-after-you staff. We want an aggressive get-after-you scheme. <clears throat> Coach Don Brown is that way by nature. And uh, – and, 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 that's why he's here. And, uh, you know, there's liabilities with everything you do. You know, there's a positive and a negative with everything you do. But we're just committed that that's the way we want to play. And, uh, but there's no misunderstanding this whole football team. You know, we talked about it just two nights ago. It's all about the defense. If you don't play great defense, you're not going to win. So it centers around playing great defense. You better be great in special teams. And I'm a big believer that your quarterback's got to play real well. Now there's other things, and that's you know we have other things in our plan to win, but those 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 three things really need to happen, you know, and and so we are going to be aggressive on defense, and I'm sure that you know we're going to get hit with some big plays and going to get thrown over our head a few times, and hopefully not too many, but you know, but we've made that decision. We're all in, we're all in, we're going, and uh, you know I want this team to have that mindset that we're you know in special teams we're going to be very aggressive, you know there's going to be fakes, there's going to be a lot of things going on here. And in defense, we're going to go after people. And on offense, we're going to go after people. We're not going to be three yards in a cloud of dust or something. It's, you know, people think, well, is that going to happen? Well, it's not going to happen. You know, uh, there may be times in the game when that happens. You know, you got to close a game out, wind that clock down, and that'll happen. You know, all I care about is winning. I don't really care. Like, some people get caught up in, like, how you win, like style points or something. All I care about is winning. So whatever we have to do in the course of that game to manage that game to win, we've got to win as many games as we possibly can win. Yep. You know, kind of, yep. Uh, seated as the, the starter, but what is your estimation? You know, looking at the candidates, you know, for, for the backup role, are, are, are going to be important for them to kind of be able to, you know, serve in that role. You know, productivity in camp. You know, 
You got you to be productive. You know, got to watch uh, Josh move this team in training camp. You know, and uh, we'll get in those competitive situations. You know, once we get the pads on, every day there'll be some, and then of course, you know, there'll be a scrimmage on Saturday, and you know, just you know, either move the team or you don't. You know, it's, I'm I'm glad if you complete, you know, 92 percent in seven on seven. I really don't care about seven on seven. I want to see you move the team when you're getting hit, you know. So I'm going to judge that and evaluate that, you know. And uh, so, you know, obviously we hold, you know, Chase accountable to the same standards, but he's coming in as a starting quarterback right now. So we're going to protect him a little bit more. Some of the other guys, we probably won't protect them as much. We're going to throw them in, into the fire a little bit and see how they go and find out who's going to take those spots, you know. And, uh, you know, you find you find one guy standing up and all I mean is, you know, there's been plenty of times in history here at Boston College where all of a sudden a guy, for whatever reason, gets in there and does so good he never, he doesn't give it back to the other guy. I mean, it's all there. It's all open. Nothing's forever. But right now, you know, Chase is a starter. Right now, uh, you know, I think Josh is battling Mike for, for that second spot right now. And uh, the second spot could always become a first, I guess. But, you know, right now that's our mindset for sure. I mean, I'm, you know, we got a clear path on what we're doing. I mean, I told you when I came here that we're going to recruit, we're going to recruit, we're going to recruit. And I'm going to head that recruiting, and we're going to drive it every day. In training camp, we will talk about recruiting every single day. I mean, that's what college football is. You know, you can't, you know, we can't go draft people. You got to go recruit them. And then, you know, you got to build your football team. So, you know, uh, in state, it starts right here. We got good, really good football in the state of Massachusetts, some really good high school football programs, and it's really important to Boston College that we work inside out. We've got to dominate here, and then we've got to expand. You know, and we've talked about that, how we would expand. But, you know, you, it's important that, you know, I believe that there's got to be a tremendous amount of pride in Massachusetts about their Division I football program. The premier eminent Division I program in the state of Massachusetts and New England is Boston College. And every kid growing up around here should feel that. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we make everyone, fans, alumni, high school programs, feel terrific. So how do we do that? We make them feel like they're a part of this thing, and, and we take care of, we take care of our, our state. So that's the philosophy, and that's the mindset, and I think that's the way you have to build it. Well, it just speaks of the mentality of Don, right? <laughs> I mean, those guys, they love football. Those are football guys, you know? You know? They remind me of some of the guys in the history here, like, you know, Jamie Silva, for example. You know, he's one of those guys, you know? I just, I always bring it to mind because I played with his dad in college, you know, and, and I, re I recruited him when I was at Indiana, but no one recruited Jamie. And all of a sudden, last minute, he came, you know, they offered him here, and he came here, and he became a really good football player because cause he was just a baller, you know? So, like, for Donnie, I'm, sure, I'm surprised he didn't break out the dude on you. Those would be dudes, right? They're ballers. They're just kind of guys. They love football. They play hard. They might not be the fastest. They might not be, or whatever, you know, the biggest, or, you know, but they're, they're those kind of guys. Those kind of guys are right out amongst us, you know, in, in New England. And, 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 you know, they have a great appreciation for, you know, New England football, Boston College, you know. So, it's, it's, here, you need to recruit Intelligent, high character guys, and develop them. Develop them. You know, those are an example of two guys that I think you know are really developing. You wouldn't you wouldn't put them in necessarily like you know five star candidates. You know, like but who cares? They're going to be good football players. That's what you need in the end. I don't think there's any question. I just think that it's hard for me to sit here and predict to anybody the rate of how this is going to move this program, you know. And in my mind, I don't know that you really asked me that, you know, but in my mind, it's just every day we're just going as hard as we can go. Do I? And I believe the arrow is going that way. 
that doesn't mean that, you know, you don't, you know, but ultimately I see this as a great path now is that, you know, one day, eight months, two years, I don't know. I, I really don't know the answer to that, but I do know the answer to this. We can recruit, we can develop. We've got the, just this wonderful place, Boston College, and there's absolutely no reason why with work ethic and time and this thing's gonna, is gonna, that needle's gonna move. And, uh, but, you know, we have some serious depth issues right now. And, uh, you know, and so I always say, why I keep saying day two is because, you know, it's real easy, as you know, three, four, five, six guys down. Happens quick. And all of a sudden, you know, you're dropping down fast right now. We don't have tremendous ability to put too many other guys up there, okay? And that's just, it is what it is, but I got a little logic about it, you know? And so, because I'm not going to slow down the tempo of practice, the physicality of practice, just not going to do it. And not because I'm stubborn, just because I know that we've got to get the philosophy here the way we want to get it, but I also know the liability is that could lead to, you know, you know, uh, lack of productivity. So, you know, it is, we just got to go and we got to hope, you know, have a little faith and, you know, and, and hope that we can stay a little healthy here too. You know, we need a little help there, but, you know, I don't, we don't control that to a degree. We do to agree, but, you know, we're not going to turn into a soft football program now, right? We can't do that, right? That'd be a total disaster. So that's not happening. So we'll just take, you know, we'll just take guys that aren't ready to play and make them play as hard as they can. And that'll come back to us one day. So that's kind of the mindset, you know, but, uh, you know, really, really am very excited about the quality of the people that we're working with, quality of coaches. And um, I think for this short period of time, I'm pleasantly uh, encouraged by all those things coming together at this point in time. And you'll know for me, I, I'm just not a guy that's going to paint this picture that I don't believe in. So that's where I am today. I don't know what tomorrow brings or the next day. I really don't. But, you know. You check with me, and I'll let you know. Trace said that he, one of his goals, certainly long-term, is to be bowl eligible. Right. Is that a realistic goal for you? Yes. Absolutely. We are fighting for that. Win the opener, get bowl eligible. Absolutely. You know, uh, we, we got to get this, this football program's got to get back to a bowl game. You know, just like we talked about earlier, you know, I just rattled it off for you. 12 years of bowl games, eight win. I mean, that's a, that's a bar. And that's a, that's a bar that, in my opinion, is a bar you need to be at and climb from. So we're in a we're in a foot race for that. We're all set, Mike. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you coming out. Hey, Mike. Yeah, nice to see you, man.